Hey, it's Jeremy here and I'm back with another tutorial. I'm going to be showing you top new features from Adobe Illustrator CC 2019. You can see that Adobe Max was last week and there was so much new things that they were showing, some cool stuff. I wasn't there personally, but I got to see the new updates from the Adobe website and I'm showing you guys some really cool tools that you can use and actually very useful. So the first thing is that you can customize your toolbars now which you couldn't have done before, which is super cool. So you can see I've got my toolbar and what I can do now, usually when you start up a document, it always starts on the left, but I'm just showing you here on the left side of the screen. And what you can do now, you'll see these little three dots on the bottom of the toolbar. You want to click that and you'll get a gray box pop up. I'll just move this to the left a bit and you get this gray box pop up. What I can do now, if I go to the bottom and it says show, I can tick off these four boxes. One of them is the gradient tool, one's the fill in the stroke. One's the ability to draw in inside objects and the other one is to change the window mode. And I can turn all those off by just clicking them and you can see how it's getting rid of them in my, in my toolbar. I can also turn them back on as well. And what I can do now as well, if I don't use certain tools, you can actually get rid of them by just dragging them and moving them onto this area. So for instance, if I don't use the perspective tool much, I can left click, drag and just drop it and you'll see how a little minus pops up on your mouse. That means it's going to minus it from the toolbar and drop it into this little menu. And you can see how they grayed out. That means the tools are actually in my toolbar. But if I scroll down now, you'll see the new tool that we just dropped there because we don't want it. It's actually white now. If I want to bring it back, I can just left click, drag it back and drop it wherever I want to. I can also move around some of the objects wherever I want. So it's all customizable. I can, you know, get rid of objects once again, just like that. And you can see. So it's really flexible and it's pretty handy. Another cool tip as well is if you click these three little lines on the top right corner, you want to click that. I can reset the toolbar. It will reset everything to the default. I can also click on basic and it will give me the basic toolbar, which is pretty interesting. I can also go back and click on advanced and it will go to the advanced toolbar. And you can also actually name your toolbar. So if I if I customize it, what I can do now is go new toolbar and call it whatever I want. And then now that toolbar is saved and you can see that all the tools, this is a custom toolbar here. And what I can do is I can manage the toolbar. So if you have multiple, you can select them, you can delete them, you can, you know, create an, a copy of it, you can do whatever you want. So you can press OK. The second cool feature is that you can make global edits. For example, if you're working in Illustrator and you're working on a business card, a logo, maybe an A4, you know, a letterhead or even like a logo mock-up of in a seal version or different versions and you you have the same symbol, this is going to be really handy. Especially if like a, if you have a logo and it's like multiplied on multiple images or mock-ups, then it's going to be heaps useful. You want to go to window and you want to go to properties, which is about halfway down. You can see here and you can see here that we have the properties menu. You can see they've also up actually updated this menu, which is super handy. So you can see I've got these three objects here of this little daisy flower. So what I've done is I've had one object and I've duplicated it. So what you want to do, I'll delete these objects. You want to have an object and you want to duplicate it. So I'm just holding shift and alt or option and you can duplicate it. And now what I can do, if I click on the one of these objects, Go to my properties panel, down the bottom in the quick action section, you can see it says start global edit. I can click that and you can see now the rectangle has changed to blue on these other objects and to red on this object that we selected. So if I zoom in here, you can see that and you can see that. So now what it allows me to do is I can actually change the color. So in the properties section, you can see it's got the fill here. I can click it on it and then it'll open my swatches panel. I can change the swatches there. Make sure your object is selected and it's going to make changes to all these other objects. So I can put a stroke on it. As you can see there, I can change the opacity and it's affecting all the other objects. So it's really useful just to have that one object and it changes everything else. So that's the global edit tool. You can also press release and it's going to release that object. I can always go back, start global edit, edit. I can click the recolor tool and recolor it with the color guide. Super handy. I can bump the opacity back up. 
I can turn the stroke off. So you can see whatever, whenever it's in this red mode with the red square and the blue, that means you're in the global edit. So I can even, you know, change swatches from here as well and play around and probably add even details. So if I go to my appearance panel, I can maybe add a drop shadow and it's going to add the drop shadow to all the obj other objects. So you can use the appearance panel with it as well. So it's super handy, you know, play around with it. It's good for logos and all that cool stuff. So jump out of that. They've added a cool feature where they actually implemented TypeKit into Adobe. So if I click on my type tools, you can see I've got all my original type. They've actually updated this area. So what I can do is change how the type appears. So instead of having typography or just ABCD, I can do the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog and it will show you how it looks like. I can change it to numbers if I want. So it's really good in refining your selection if you're looking at certain fonts and you're not sure it's going to help you out. So I can change that. I can also do the selected text, which I have here, which is Hello World, and that's going to use that text there. I can also just drag this type tool here and I'll do it from here so you guys can see. You can also increase the size. You see you've got these three A's. I can increase the size so I can see it better. Makes it easier so you're not, you know, squinting at your screen. So that's pretty handy. I can also filter things out. And the cool thing about these filters is that it, they've changed it. So it's like um, Adobe type kit. So I can search by classification. So if I want to go sans serif or more decorative or black letter or script, or, you can go search for those letters, which is super cool. And you can to choose properties like the weight, the contrast as well. The star is you can favorite certain fonts. So I can star it. You can see on the edge here, you can star that. And now it will be in my favorites. I also can see the most recently added fonts. So if you add certain fonts on type kit, and you can see that there. You can also see the active Adobe fonts as well. So you can see these are a couple of the activated ones. You can see it's got the little tick there. And these fonts were already on my account, which is super cool. I can click find more and these will filter all the Adobe fonts. And if I turn the filter off, I can click clear all, that'll filter that out. And now I'm searching all the fonts. Look how many there are, there's like thousands and thousands. Super useful, super handy. And it's just open up your world to play around with fonts more and just get creative and explore that. The next thing they've updated is they've actually updated two new views. So you can see here, I've got a shape. I've also got a guide, a custom guide that I've made. What I can do is go into trim mode. So if I go to the top left corner, click view and click trim view, which is under pixel preview. You'll see that there's no shortcut there, but you click trim view. And what it does, it's going to trim everything outside the bounds of the artboard. So usually, you know, when I'm having working on a logo, I have heaps of stuff on the outside and it looks very messy. And sometimes I just want to, you know, cut that stuff off and just look what it's going to look like when I'm going to print it or when I'm going to save it for a web banner or Instagram post, all that stuff. I can also, you know, continue playing around with this shape, but you can see the guide's gone because that is a special, that's a, that's a, a guide. It's not going to show up, which is cool. But if it's like shapes and you have your art here, it's not going to delete your art. It's just going to cut off the edges there. I can get out of that trim view as well. And you see the guide comes back on and the shape, the full shape, you can see it. They also have present presentation mode. So I can click that and maybe you want to show it to a client if they're in the room or you want to show it to your teacher if you're studying at college or maybe to your art director if you're working on a new project. You can minimize everything else and just focus and show them the work you're working on. So it, cut, it cuts out, it just shows the artboards and leaves the area black, which is pretty cool. And it goes full screen. So that's pretty helpful. Last but not least is the freeform gradient tool. This is super handy, super useful. They used to have the mesh tool and the gradient tool separate, but they've sort of combined the two to make it really useful. So I'm going to open my gradient tool here. You can go to window and gradient to open that up. You want you originally we have the linear, the gradial and the freeform and the third one. So you want to click that one, make sure you click the object. And for me, it says edit gradient because I've already made the gradient. And what happens is you'll get these dots and you can literally move these dots and the gradient is going to edit it live. 
What I can also do is select the dot and change the color to whatever a color I want. So you left click once, change the color. You can see I'm making like a nice rainbow color. That's super cool, super handy. Another cool trick as well is you see this little line outside the little circle there and this little black dot. I can actually drag it out and it's going to increase the radius or the spread of that gradient for that dot. And you can see you can also edit the opacity. So you can see in the little gradient box I can edit the opacity and it's just going to go to sort of a white color or no color which is white. The spread there, so maybe I want this one, opacity, I can bring it back up, I can increase the spread manually. If I put my mouse over and hold shift, you can see there how it's moving. It's like a living organism, which is pretty cool. I can also delete things by pressing, clicking and just pressing delete or pressing the little bin icon here. And that should delete the point. I like to just select it and press delete. If you have too many points there, I can move them around. I can also add points by just left clicking on the, the artboard or, or the object or the shape. So you can see this is just a rectangle shape. And I can add plenty and I can just go and just select the colors I want. Super cool. I can also play around. You can see on the, where it says draw. Because I'm working with points at the moment, which is just anchor points and dots, but you can work with the lines. So if I click lines, it's sort of like the pen tool where as you click and make a new line, it's gonna start to add a curve to your line. You don't have to click and drag, you just let go and it automatically does it. So you can see I'm adding sort of a line like that across the object. I can select the object and I can actually move the line. As you can see, I don't know why it's all white, but I'll just change the colors there. So I can actually move the line and it's going to move the gradient. I can also just left click on the line or make a totally new line as well. So I can have like multiple custom gradients all along my shape or my artwork. See that you want to put your mouse over the line and when it says that plus you can see that it changes and it says it has a little white dot and I can move that around. So that's pretty cool. And then you can delete them and when you delete it, it will select the the dot in between on the on the ends or the edges and it will just connect the two dots there. Super cool. So that's the freeform gradient tool. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you guys like the new features in Adobe Illustrator. If you don't have them yet, definitely update your Illustrator and all of your Adobe Cloud because a lot of these changes have been affected in Photoshop and InDesign and a lot of other programs. So it's heaps beneficial, heaps good. So leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more content every week. And I hope you guys have a good week.